Welcome to Jack the Line 3 and the guide for the Lone Wolf achievement. And of course, you can also unlock the achievements Dynamic Duo, Bulletproof and Deadly Weapons with this. The main requirements for the Lone Wolf are that you do not use more than one mercenary at any time, which means that you have to master the entire campaign as a lone fighter. Therefore, we recommend the Die Hard difficulty with no easy mode, disable until the bitter end and lethal weapons active. We also recommend having your own mercenary with maximum agility and strength as well as 30 points each in technology, explosive and medical, as we have to be completely self-sufficient. As tactical advantages, sneak and throw are particularly important as we are mainly undercover and have to rely on grenades in the late areas. Especially at the beginning of the campaign, the quick save key with F5 and the quick load key with F9 are your friends, as even the smallest mistakes can end in your death. Right at the beginning, you can arm yourself with Bastion's AK-47 if you kill him in battle, which can make the first fights much easier. In general, you will have to skip most of the areas in the story and side quests anyway, in order to complete the achievement. But here is a clear spoiler warning. We will touch on some story areas and mandatory missions below that are prerequisites for the achievement. So only look further if you already know the campaign or you don't like surprises. Following the introduction, we sneak through the next map to set up our future silent sniper, where we can directly back a first suitable weapon, a K98, without a conflict, and with it, all through not yet silent, quite easily finish off all enemies, because we have the high ground. Basically, we rely on stealth killing and the possibility to act covertly for as long as possible. Here we have a clear damage bonus if we take out a target covertly with one shot and other opponents don't notice this, because that way we don't trigger a fight. This works especially well as soon as we have a weapon with a silencer. We recommend the very powerful M42, which you can get quite quickly, as well as a maximum modification upgrade for a long range and silent action. This way, we can easily and effectively clear most encounters on our way to the first target, the Major, at the very top right corner of the map. Because due to the high range and mostly in a lying position, most opponents don't even reach us or have a chance to fire or shut us at all. And should the situation inevitably lead to a confrontation, we can help ourselves with various grenades, Molotov cocktails and, especially later on, gas grenades and heavy equipment such as the grenade or rocket launcher. However, we should always have as much explosives as possible ready for the Major and the subsequent final battle. In the fight against the Major, there is a decisive peculiarity. We cannot retreat at the beginning of the fight, therefore you should eliminate the following 10 enemies silently without starting a fight. With this order and a little patience, you can then enter the fight against the remaining troops who represent the absolute crooks as a solo fighter. In addition, you should have gained enough experience on the way to this battle to have at least 14 action points available, otherwise you can only fire one shot per round. It is also a good idea to attack at night or when visibility is poor, as you will have a distinct advantage thanks to your special weapon and specialization. It is above all the remaining enemies, all of whom are very strong and have special abilities that pose a challenge at the major battle. Therefore, only brute force will help here, as soon as we have eliminated all opponents who can be eliminated silently. For our first attack, it's all about the right timing and the use of the grenade launcher with explosive grenades. This allows you to take out a group of 5 to 7 strong enemies in one go, and then gradually retreat using gas grenades and Molotov cocktails to cloak yourself again and take out the straggling enemies and the Major himself one by one. The decisive factor here is that you can fire at least 2 shots with your sniper rifle per round, so you have 14 action points at your disposal. In addition, combat stimulants can temporarily increase your action points and you should have enough healing material. Or even the special healing syringe for a complete recovery in your luggage. If several enemies meet in the same area, it is worth using the grenade or rocket launcher again, to achieve maximum damage against as many enemies as possible at once. To finish the fight, all enemies in the sector must be eliminated, even if the Major has already given up. Your retreat points can be secured by gas or fire, allowing you to build up a lead and greater distance from the pursuers. And once again, with your cloak restored, you can exploit your range and firepower. 
cliffs or natural cover can be used to force the enemy to take a diversion and get close to you. Here, you have the possibility to take out the enemies individually or in groups with explosives, and to regenerate and regroup again and again. This tactic also works in other difficult sectors, where there are many enemies to fight at once or the conditions offer no other option. And with the last attacker down, we can save the president and decide the fate of the major, through our choices irrelevant to achieving the achievement. Because either way, back on the starting island, we face the final battle against the mastermind of the conspiracy. Here you can avoid all further fights and sneak through enemy sectors. And the final battle is divided into two areas, one on the surface and one underground. The fight on the surface is easy to do because, in contrast to the fight against the major, you can retreat from the combat area without restriction, and this always return distinguished and silently eliminate individual enemies. As an alternative weapon, in addition to the M42, the PSG-1 can also be used, since we can also fire a shot with 7 action points and the damage is comparable. The advantage here is a higher critical damage probability, but we lose some range, which is insignificant. Under the ground, we find a long tube-like passage, where we first work our way through the middle, step by step and slowly. Here we find enemies again and again, until we find a very large group of enemies at the end of the tube. The enemies here are comparatively easy at first, and with permanent camouflage and stealthy killing, we can take them all out one after the other without taking a hit. Alternatively, it is possible to clear the areas on the left and right. All through, here we can quickly be attacked from several directions by many enemies. As soon as we reach the rear area, we should be careful again, as a massive group of enemies is waiting here, and we have to resort to explosive grenades or our rocket launcher again. At this point, you can also unlock the achievement Deadly Weapons by killing 10 enemies in a single move. But there are a few surprises waiting for you, especially after the passage. Although the enemies in this room will stay there, and you should only approach them very carefully. Also, scattered enemies may appear from the side areas after using the grenade or rocket launcher, through you can wait a turn or two to see if you get any visitors. For the last room and the boss, it is once again a good idea to use everything you have, step by step, to fight individual enemies. Our tip. Even if you only see one enemy in their last room, there are usually several hidden in the immediate vicinity. And the use of grenades and rockets is once again a good idea here. Santiago himself is no longer a real threat when isolated and you should be able to deal with her without any problems. Finally, in addition to the Lone Wolf achievement, you can also complete a dynamic duel as well as bulletproof because thanks to the possibility of quick saving and quick loading, you never get into the embarrassment of your only mercenary being brought down. Also, in most fights, the option of retreating and attacking again is offered, again allowing you to act covertly, giving you plenty of opportunities to effectively take out crowds of enemies as well. To complete the game after Santiago's task, you still have to eliminate the remaining individual enemies in the side passage, who are stubbornly hiding there. Here you can again search for them covertly and surprise them out of the darkness. And after there are some more interesting achievements to master, hopefully we'll see each other again soon. And if you have an achievement you're particularly interested in, or if you have a question about the game, feel free to drop me in a line in the comments or check us out on Discord or in the almost daily Twitch live streams. I say goodbye until next time and see you soon.
like a motherfucker. That'll leave a bruise. 